Hi. <laughs> I always sound like that the first time. I'm Christy Strau, and I'm here with Willow Paul, a fine art photographer, documentary photographer. I guess I would describe you as both of those, right? And we are going to use a technique that I use in coaching called voice dialogue, facilitated voice dialogue. So Willow, describe what we were just talking about. You have lots of projects going, but. One of my favorite things to do is have lots of projects going and make them so humongous and like gigantic that I can never finish. And um, it makes it easy to never sort of you know, decide whether something, I, I never know like if something's done and when to find a finishing point. And, um, and it makes me feel, you know, like I'm not doing a good job as an artist because I do feel like I'd like to finish some of my work sometimes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, which makes yeah. sense. And, you know, that's a super, that's a common theme because once you finish something, then maybe you have to let somebody see it. So the context around this is we, I'm going to ask Willow to first of all, get centered. And all I mean by that is just are your feet on the floor and are you kind of like in your willowness? Yeah, I'll go down to the floor a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> that's good. And you feel centered in yourself? Okay, so that's where we start kind of in your, what, what they call in voice dialogue, your aware ego or the part of you that can observe what's going on. So then the next step we take is to have you shift your position a little bit and embody the part of you that doesn't wanna finish your projects. So maybe you scoot your chair over one direction or another you might close your eyes for a second just to get in touch with that part. And when you feel like that part is here, tell me. Well, it's a little foreign for me, but hopefully she's here. Yeah. Well, we'll see. Let's see what happens. So um, so Willow and I have been talking about her fear of, of, or her reluctance to finish some projects. Do you know anything about that? I might know something about it. Yeah. So one thing I want to tell you is, um, you don't have to say anything that you don't want to say or tell us anything you don't want to tell us. So it sounds like you might know something about it. Yes. And um, what feels safe to tell us that you know? Um, well, I know that Willow, part of why Willow does photography is to have connections with people. And if she finishes a project, maybe it means that she's done with People, and she doesn't want to be done with them. <laughs> so if she finishes a project, then she's done with the connection with that person? Yeah, something mm. like that. Yeah. And has that been the history in the past, is when she finishes a project and she doesn't get to see the people anymore? That's why she never finishes a project. So, yeah. <laughs> so that there's still a possibility of meeting those people again. Yeah. Um, but I have to say, like, as Willow, I have found some finishing, I have found some like, some stopping points in my projects and, um, and I've still continued my relationships with people after, um, yeah. after yeah. that. So go back to embodying the part again, because it sounds like the part is still really nervous about you losing the connections. Is that accurate? Yeah. I think it's just something that I, um, it's something that Willow 
worries about all the time, whether inside of art or I guess like her art is a part of creating connections with people. So yeah. it's kind of like a, just a tool for her to um, create stronger connections with community. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which makes and sense. Uh, like lose those connections. I think part of it is because she's kind of nomadic or has lived in a lot of different places and it's hard to create communities in different places when you don't stay that long. Yeah, yeah. Do you have any suggestions for her about how she can keep the connections and still finish the projects? I think um, maybe just remembering how other projects worked out, like um, some of the other projects that she has found stopping points on. Um, she still has connections with the people in those projects and to just remember that that's probably how it could play out. Is that sufficient for you? For me? Yeah, for you as the the part that um, is worried about her losing connections? Like if she maintained the connections in these projects and still finished it, would you be okay? Mm, maybe, I'm not sure if there's more or not. Mm, so there might be more than just the loss of connection. Yeah. Any guess about what else there might be? Maybe it's like a concern about quality as well. I don't know if that's even the same part or not, but um, mm. it's like, I think that Willow has really high standards, of it, high, and she knows like art is subjective, <laughs> but she has very high standards about art <laughs> and what's good enough and what's not. And, um, you know, she subjects her own art to that, so it's hard when you're constantly doing that to share your work or finish a project. Right, because there's no objective way to decide if it's good enough. Yeah, and she doesn't really have like a big art community or I think, yeah, it's like a recurring theme to, to need community to bounce ideas off of. And, um, you know, it's a little bit scary for her to just put her work out there and not know if it's really at the point that she wants it to be at or if it's actually finished. So would this be solved by her creating a critique community kind of, or a group of artists that she could run her stuff by before she posts it, puts it out? That would be good. I think the other thing that could help would be um, just putting more unfinished work into the world, like just putting stuff out and sharing it. It doesn't have to be done yet, you know? I think it's okay to just share as, as you're going through the process. Right, so share the process rather than the event at the end. Yeah, I think that um, a lot of times in art, people are really concerned with the end product, but it's kind of about the process more a lot of times. Yeah. So how would you feel about that if she shared stuff in process? <clears throat> I'd be happy about that. Okay. And how would you feel about her finding a couple of other artists or some number of other artists to form kind of like an informal critique group? That would be good. Um, I think it would have to be the right artists. It would. Yeah. Um, Do you have a sense of who the right I'm artists are? frustrated with groups where people don't follow through. <laughs> yeah, right. Who would be the right artists? Any sense? Um, I guess she'd like to have like another photographer in the group, but also having people from other disciplines would be useful. Do you have any ideas of names right now? Um, she has like one friend here that in Indonesia that um, is a visual artist from another discipline who could be helpful. Um, but as for photographers, she's not, I'm not sure yet. Does it need, does she need to run stuff by photographers? I think that they have a different way of seeing than mm. um, 
than people from other disciplines sometimes. So it's useful. Would you feel okay with her starting to put her stuff out there finished and or unfinished if she doesn't have a critique group yet? Yeah, I think that part of the problem is momentum. So I think if she starts putting some things out there, whether they're totally finished or not, it's going to help her continue to create better work. And how do you feel emotionally about this, these things as a solution, her finding a critique group um, and doing the other things that you suggested, keeping connection with people, is that sufficient? Yeah, I think so. I think it's just, um, she has to find some kind of way of staying, um, what's the word, like actually, committing to it. Yeah. She kind of like slips in and out of, you know, making promises to, <laughs> to herself about like, you know, when she's gonna work on art or, um, you know, and, and remembering like, oh, this feels really good. And then there's like periods of time where she's like, I have to do real work. I can't, I don't have time for that. <laughs> do you have any suggestions about this? about the time piece? Well, actually, Willow, I, <laughs> I've been thinking about um, doing something that you suggested just to sort of like switch things up a bit and just, I was thinking of just um, doing like 15 minutes of whatever a day mm -hmm. and just seeing if that kind of changes the energy. Yeah. Because I don't think I can get a lot done, but I think it might just, um, it, it'll just sort of change the way that I approach it. How do you feel about doing that? Good. Is there anything else you want Willow to know? Um, I think <laughs> there's like so much judgment in the world. Like what's a little more judgment? I think if her work sucks, <laughs> It's okay. It's just kind of like a process and, you know, she's getting, everybody's getting judged from every direction. So it's just a little more judgment and it's okay. She can with, withhold that and it'll make her feel better if she shares stuff that she's working on. Yeah. Is there anything else that you are nervous about or that you're afraid of? I guess it's just like this fear of um, sharing things and it just never really connecting with anyone. Like it's really meaningful to Willow, but not, not to anyone else. Mm. So the putting something out there, wanting connection and then nothing happening. Yeah. Is that fear big enough to keep Willow from putting anything out? Possibly. Or, you know, maybe she'll just do it half-heartedly, but not put her heart into really sharing a finished project or, you know, like deciding that something is good enough to finish, you know. Do you have any ideas of an antidote for this? I don't think there is one, I think, except for just like, just sort of pulling off the bandaid and just sharing work, whether um, she thinks it's like, you know, perf perfection or not. Yeah, okay. Anything else you want her to know? No, I don't think so. Okay, do you have a name? I feel like it's like some aunt name, like some old auntie. <laughs> <laughs> does Willow, does she have, a, so, so what, what do you think it is? I don't know, it's something like, you know, some old fashioned auntie name, but she's kind of a killjoy. So I don't know exactly what her name is. Mm. Like Aunt Marma or something like that. <laughs> I'm not sure. 
we could come back and talk to her again. Yes. Okay. All right. So come back to your center, to your observer part, back to Willow and tell me when you're here. Okay. What do you remember from that? Um, I mean, I was pretty cognizant of what Aunt Marma was saying. <laughs> you were cognizant? Yeah. Yeah. So just because you finish a project doesn't mean you lose the connection. Right. You can put stuff up that's um, works in progress. And not perfect. And not perfect. Whatever that is. <laughs> yeah. And start to find a, start to put together a critique group. Yeah. I kind of want to write that down. Yeah. I guess I can watch this again later. I actually had a critique group before, and um, I was kind of thinking about that. It was a lot of work, actually, to make people follow through. I think that's what I don't like about groups, working in groups sometimes. Like, I, I feel like I'm putting a lot of energy into it, and then people are kind of flaky. So you yeah. have to have the right people in your group. But that being said, I had a really good um exchange with another photographer for a long time where we would like talk about our projects and critique each other's work and help each other get ready for exhibits and that was really meaningful so what happened to that relationship oh nothing bad it's just um she got really busy with like personal stuff and she couldn't do it after a while it was like yeah. you know things change well maybe it doesn't have to be a group maybe it's just another photographer yeah, that's possible. So that you wouldn't have to herd cats too much. So yeah. what did it feel like to do this process? Um, I don't know, I have this really sort of, uh, I don't know, I have a strange um, mix of like very, I sort of, what am I trying to say? Like. I have a side that's very like um, rule based and like into order and stuff and and it's hard for me to sort of think about the idea of finding another part of myself because it feels too weird. It feels um, like something that's impossible or it's too out there, you know, um, but then there's the other side of me that's like I hate rules and I hate people telling me what to do and and I love yoga and you know um, I don't know like astrology and all that stuff and um, so that's the part of me that can get into it so I think it's just like maybe and it's like exercise and that it's a bit foreign when you first start doing a certain type of exercise mm -hmm. and I know I've done this stuff with you before but I don't know I just it's still a bit um, it's not comfortable or easy. Yeah. Do you feel like you learned anything? Yeah, I think so. Um, I think there are probably things that I already know intuitively, of course, but um, it just feels good to sort of have that list of things that I can do because sometimes it feels too monumental to make something happen because you're like, I don't know where to start. You know? Yeah. Um, yeah, so I think those are some like manageable chunks that I could start working on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there definitely are manageable chunks. The loss of connection when you finish a project, in my world anyway, is monumental. Oh, really? Yeah. I wasn't sure if that would make sense. Oh, God, no. I mean, yeah, it makes perfect sense. I would never finish anything if it meant a guaranteed loss of connection. Yeah. So that seems like a really good reason not to finish anything. 
Yeah, I've been working on this one project since 2017, I think, like with them. Um, and it's with three Indonesian people that um, lived on Jeju Island where I worked in Korea. And I did like portraits of them. And I also visited each of their hometowns here in, jo in uh, Indonesia. And like, I put a lot of work <laughs> into this project, like time and effort. And then there's just like kind of a small problem that I just sort of decided to, you know, focus elsewhere. I was like, oh, I can't figure this out. I'm just not gonna. It was very easy for me to make that choice because it means I don't have to finish. And meanwhile, like they've all gone home almost like two out of three are back home. I wanted to finish the project before they left, um, mm -hmm. Judge, before they left Korea because the whole project is about, um, you know, like memories of home and um, working abroad and how your perception of a place changes when you go back and stuff, but it's okay. I mean, I still want to finish it. It's just, it's been a long time, you know? Yeah, and there's just a little thing in the way. Yeah, it was like a problem with print quality. I have a specific idea for like how I want to finish the project. And, you know, I'm pretty clear about that. It's just, I couldn't find a good print um, a good place that understood color management, like for printing, and I don't want to make a finished product that looks really bad. So, um, but I got somebody's number like months ago, who is a printer, like professional photographer, printer. So I just haven't followed through with that. And then, you know, I, yeah, I'd like to finish that project. So finish it in a way that keeps you in contact with the people. Yeah, well, part of the finished product is going to be these little accordion books that I make of the photos. And I want to send those books to the artists. I mean, not to the art, to the people that I took photos of. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I think we should talk about this again in two weeks and see what happened. OK and see if we actually talk to the part who's worried or if there's somebody else underneath there. So I have to be accountable? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's an experiment. We can okay. destroy the recordings <laughs> if it doesn't work. I don't know other people know there's tons of neurotic, weird people in the world. <laughs> That's all there is in the world is neurotic, weird people. Especially and, artists. Oh, well, don't forget. I mean, you're making something that's never been seen before. <laughs> There's nothing more scary. I mean, maybe getting pregnant and having a baby is worse, but or scarier, yeah. not worse. But this is just the scariest stuff. You make stuff that's never been seen. And there's no, I don't know. It's just, it's so vulnerable. It's no wonder people have such a hard time getting their work into the world. It's just the most vulnerable thing ever. Yeah. But at least you, I feel like, got some advice about how to go forward. Yeah. So we'll see. We'll talk in two weeks and see how it went. Okay. Thanks, Christy. Yeah. So this is Willow Paul, a professional photographer. We've been talking to a part of her that has some suggestions about how to go forward. And my name is Christy Strau. I'm a coach and I work with creatives to get their, to help them get their work into the world because it's so important. <laughs>